Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, because there are some, um, Asuridai around here, and I haven't been up there, interestingly enough. I also haven't been up here, but that's a bit of a, that's a di bit of a different story. So we're basically getting out of this, uh, new D no, it's not a new DLC, but it's, uh, of this, um, well, it's, it's a new it's a new area that was added in a patch, and uh, we're getting out of it because uh, we've, we've done everything. Well, we reached the end or the edge of it. At least I think so. We're still in the same. E no, we're not. Yeah, we're back back here. But yeah, I, I looked it. I looked at it. There was nothing else. There's some areas that we haven't explored, but that's because I think some of them are only accessible if you have a uh, fast jet ski. And our jet ski is not good enough. I also don't think I can go over to that box over there. Besides, it's probably not going to have anything interesting, so it's not its not really... Oh, I can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as I said, nothing interesting. However, there are Azuridai. I'm not actually sure what damage I just took. I think it might have been because of the rocks that are on the water. Because there's some uh, rocks there. I'm not sure. Either way. Um... Oh... I was indeed here. Well, I was around. And I explored all of that. So we're good. And this is the way out. There is Zuridai are in here. There we go. We have access to them from here. Not the best access. But... At least some axis. They're gonna come. Yeah, it looks like that. Oh, oh, that's a Goliathus. That could be good news. I do need a. Um... Oh my god. It probably isn't good news. Because I can't. I don't think I can go up there. So that's them gone. Oh, there's more. N maybe. My god, there's another Goliathus can start combat. You know exactly why. Oh, they're coming for me. Are they? Because I, I need that. Okay. Am I going to be able to get that this next turn? Yes, I am. Okay. Because I need the range. Whoa, there's so many of them. Okay, well, uh, let's bring you out. Or bring you down. And now a fireball should take care of it. As long as I hit. And I do. Uh, we can't exit combat because I hit somebody else. Hello. Okay, my next cold. There's more. Oh my. There's three of them. That's unbelievable. But th that's, that's what it is. Can I actually do that? I cannot. Curious. I can do that. That is a lot of damage, and I can do that as well. There really is no reason to kill them from here. Wow. I... It, I mean, how many did we kill? This is the fourth one. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. No. Let's wait a little bit. I can send another ice shard. And I believe that is the end. That is indeed the end. But we can't go over there. Apart from the other area. Let's do that. Let's see if we can do that now that we have a little bit of a faster... Uh, so we didn't take damage there. We have a little bit of a faster uh, vehicle. I'm, it might be that I just need to drop the, all the equipment that I have in here. Because it's just that one over there. So you know how it goes. Um, yep, that's that. Okay, let's see what happens. Too slow. Okay. Let's leave it over here. Leave the equipment over here. Uh, let's save, let's save the game here, because this might be pointless. I can drop all the things. I, I really don't need to carry anything. Uh, let's see. So if I drop this, so if I open that, I can take all... And I can then click on stuff. 
and I can just uh, do this, which is a bit of overkill, but we don't worry about we don't worry about that. How much? How heavy was it? It's actually quite a lot. Yeah, I don't need to drop all of these keys. I'm good with what I have, and one healing kit is probably not going to be a big deal. Uh, oh my god, my finger is, is dying. Ooh, I have some of the expansion uh, stuff over here. Some of the expansion drugs. Those are pretty decent for actual combat usage. We basically got, got it off with uh, using them throughout the whole expansion because of it, because of how useful they are. Okay, uh, so there's also some engines over there that might not be necessary. I don't know why I had them, but I did. So, yeah, that's considerably better. Let's find out just how well this... No. Really? What? This is why I saved. How Look at the speed of this thing. What do you expect this to be? Does it need to be in combat or something? Because it says too slow. Just, do you see the speed of that? <laughs> do you see, do you see what I'm talking about? That thing is fast. It's the fastest. 83, 80, uh, 38. The vehicle weight. Oh, so that's vehicle weight slash total weight. I see. Yeah, I don't know, but the speed over here, 74. Why is the evasion modifier? Oh, right. So the speed is 440. Base speed is 220. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're not going to be able to kill those Goliaths, which is a shame because they are nice. They are very nice enemies to kill. Uh, either way, that's that, and uh, we have a place to go. Where do, didn't we find out where we were supposed to go? Because I sort of forgot. It's been it's been a while. Um, so, well, let me actually look it up. And by looking it up, I mean you know read it. And uh, it's this one. So we need to go to the SGS, as I said before. Um, we're not too far away from the SGS. What should I do here in terms of uh, of getting back home? Probably can take the boat from... Yeah, that's probably the easiest the easiest way. Uh, the, the same guy that told us that he couldn't take us where we want to go. He's the same guy that, that's actually going to be the, the one responsible for taking us here. To the Southgate Station. So yeah, that's Captain Savannah over there. Captain Savannah is the one that is actually going to take us to the the Silent Island, Forsaken Island. That's the one. Uh, but first, we're going to go to our private quarters because I want to offload a lot of the crap that I have. Did I ever figure out how to, or what happened to my, yeah, my doctor's pouch? I absolutely did. Good, good. Uh, and then we have this is none of it is crafting. This is the crafting workbench good and so basically all we do is transfer all this i'm sure some of it is good some of it is bad we don't need it uh and also the rest i think advanced catalyzing belt we might need some of these i no, we're never gonna need any of these but besides that's beside the point uh they, they could be needed so all the goggles are good that one is thought control increase we don't need that that one i keep around the laser pistol i don't need the Zal pistol, I will need that because that's for a quest. And some of the grenades. Uh, yeah, I don't need the Mark IIs. But yeah, I'm carrying around Mark IIs. We don't need those. Um, and then the batteries. Yeah, those I will keep. There we go. The rest doesn't matter. Uh, also, the ammo. Should I keep that ammo with me? No. We don't need it. Uh, and then the rest of the stuff. Just normal things. More or less. Oh, lockpicks. Yeah. Um, so, we don't need to repair any of our equipment. So, let's just leave it behind. Hot wiring kit. That's not very heavy, so I'll keep it. Um, so, everything else is good. 
But for lockpicks, that's not quite the case. Oh, also, for some reason, I have two. Why? The Omni tools are expensive. That's why. Um, so let's see if we can get some some lockpicks. I doubt that I will. Where would that be? I mean, the the guy that sells guns should should have it. Oh, this is not it. Armory and shooting range. That's the one. But then again, it's lockpick. So, I, like, does he actually have it? Because if I I know of a place around here that that sells a bunch of things, so he probably they probably would have some stuff. But unfortunately, yeah, I don't really see the reason why uh, he would have, and he doesn't. As far as I can tell, he doesn't have lockpicks at all. He does want some of my stuff, but I, I don't. I'm not getting, giving it to him. Uh, yeah, no lockpicks here. Yeah, I don't know. Let's hope that I don't run out of them. Basically, that's. That's just, that's the, uh, that's just how I, I see it. Oh, man. So we lost 50 Stygian coins for this particular journey. Of course, we could have come here on our jet ski, but I didn't want to. Uh, because it takes a little while, and there's no reason to. Reason to. Let's have a chat with Captain Svana. Damn, kid, there was an attack on the rig recently, but it seems like the eels still keep things under control. Yeah, it was me uh, who did that. Uh, so I, I need to get to the Forsaken Island. She lifts her goggles to reveal her astonished gaze. The what now? The Forsaken Island, if possible? Listen, kid, listen. I don't think you wanna... You know what you're talking about. Forsaken Island, the Forsaken Island, is a very dangerous place. And no one with a brain bigger than Slack... Than what? Who's Slackjaws? There's, the, there's this, this person called Slackjaw, and their brain is very tiny. Anyway, uh, nobody with a, a big brain goes there. Didn't you hear about the devastating currents that surround the island, the behemoth? Yes. No. That's... Uh, yeah, I heard it all. I, I want to get to the island. Can you ferry me over there? You ain't rowing with both, both oars, kid. It's too dangerous. Even if we ignore a giant man-eating beast, the currents around the island will turn the ferry into scrap metal. It would take a hell of a skilled ferryman to get you there in one piece. Well, it's going to be a, a fairy woman, but sure. Uh... Why do you think I came to you? I was told you are the best. She laughs. Yeah, I was told you were derailed. I mean, thanks for the compliment, but the answer is still no. I don't know anyone who navigated that bloody currents, those bloody currents, and returned to brag about it. If compliments won't convince you, will money? She crosses her arms and stands still, looking you straight in the eye. She considers your offer for a few moments and then sighs before replying. Fine, fine. I can see you aren't giving up. I guess I have gone derailed too, but I'll take you there. By the way, what do you want from that forsaken place? I'm going to kill the behemoth. Yep, derailed as a lunatic, rowing with half an oar. Whatever the case, kid, I'm going to charge you 400 for the trip. And that is non-negotiable. It's risky, it's dangerous, and if we do make it out of there alive, at least I want to show something f for it. Buy myself something nice. Fix the boat up. Yeah. So, kid, do you have the shinies? Yeah, sure. All right, kiddo. Hop aboard. Damn it. I... Yes? Yes? We made it, kid. I'm so glad we aren't sleeping with the eels. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? I don't know what that... The, the, what, 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 yeah, so I have 2.6 uh, thousand Stygian coins. That's pretty good. We have some cave hoppers. I'm sure nothing terrible is going to happen. Why would it? It's just a behemoth. What What could it be? Just a big... Likely it's just a big uh, Azuridai. I mean, there's mine shrooms. And, and the, this whole thing about currents, I don't... Oh, we don't know where we are. Cool. I like it. Uh, this whole thing about currents really didn't play a role in any... Anything. So... That was a sound. I thought it was going to be bats, because, you know, that's just how this game does does bats a bunch. And it kind of sounds like that at the beginning. But not so much the roar. So there's no... Okay. So there's no strange presence or anything. It's just... A normal roar. I mean, it's not a very normal roar. It's abnormal, but we, we, we don't mind. We don't mind the abnormality. Okay. So that's taken care of. And I have a shield if I need it, which I likely want. Um, 
because it... Oh. We have a wreck. Over there. Cave hoppers. So, maybe it's just a giant cave hopper. There's some bones. There's a very, very loud noise. It's like right next to my head. That's th uh, it's that loud. There's another wreck. Actually, this is just a, a normal boat. Oh. And the way in. Maybe I should have exhaled all that through that thing. Cause look at the look at the mana I have. I don't have that much. That's the bats. And um, oh, there it is. Even though it isn't immediately obvious, there is a small gap between the piled up rocks and the cave wall. Upon closer inspection, it seems like the gap is just wide enough for you to go through. You manage to reach the other side. Two robed women stand in the middle of a small cavern, facing each other. Their gleaming eyes become focused on you the moment you reveal your presence. The darkness of the cave as well as that of their hoods make it difficult for you to discern any facial features of these two women. But the details are not your concern right now. Their hostile poses are. Oh no, not their poses! One of the two women speaks with a frigid, unwelcoming voice. Identify yourself, visitor. Who are you and what is your purpose here? Um, I'm Carrie and I mean you no harm. The two women exchange looks, but no words. A short glance is all it takes for them to know what the other one is thinking, it seems. Carrie, I am Adira, and this is my sister Beatrice. Your purpose here, Carrie. Um... I heard about the monster, Behemoth. The two women exchanged looks yet again. This time their wordless communication took a bit longer than previously. Still, you eventually get your response. Many came here for this very re that very reason. I'm sure you walked past the remains of some of your uh, of some on your way in. What can you tell me about the Forsaken Behemoth? I thought it was the Forsaken Island, but I'm coming up with names. She smiles. Apparently, I can tell that she smiles. You've gotten this far, so I think you deserve the truce. The Forsaken Behemoth doesn't exist. It's just behemoth. That's why. All the things you've been told are in fact false. I forget. Uh, everything you heard is a product of my sister's skillful manipulation. It was... If one has the ability to control fire, moving air to create frightening sounds is not an issue. Especially when the entrance to the cave helps it resonate and reach the ears of superstitious ferrymen. But why are you doing all this? We don't like visitors. I think that's fairly obvious. Is it? I, I don't think it is. I don't know why it would be. Ironically, our whole plan also attracted a fair number of crazy monster hunters. Or at least what, or at least what we suspect they were since they came well armed. Um. Okay. And some of them were really rude. They still haven't left the island to this day. Yes, because they are dead. It's impolite to overstay your welcome, I say. She flashes a malicious smile. Apparently, I can tell that it is malicious. Um, so, they they killed them. Hmm. Even, even though they killed them, uh, my... My option here is... So basically, there's nothing interesting on this island. No, unless you think hoppers and mine shrooms are interesting. Nothing interesting at all? The visitor meant other than the two of us. I'm sure of that. How did you two end up here, if I may ask? Allow us to tell a story. Tell you a story. Uh, yes. <clears throat> you met... Okay, we... we a young girl, I'm not going to do that voice. A young girl was born and raised in a small station far away from here. The girl had a twin sister whom she loved more than anything in this world. The two were inseparable. The sisters were inseparable, as most twins tend to be. As unfortunate as it is, several tragedies made the bond between the sisters even stronger than before. Their father, a good and caring man, died from the hands of a vile rape 
of vile raiders that had constantly circled the station like packs of hungry rat hounds. Their mother, a gorgeous woman and equally, if not more, caring than the father, died from a broken heart. The little girl and her sister were left living with their grandmother, an old, disabled woman who sh could barely take care of herself, let alone feed and raise two young girls. The sisters never loved her. She was a selfish and bitter old woman. It was a miracle how she even managed to raise such a selfless and intelligent son when she herself was quite the opposite. The next page of the story spells poverty and a life that was about to get even harder. The girl and her sister shared a gift. They were psionics. One was gifted with the ability to control fire, one the ability to control frost. Control is the wrong word here, for they had no real control over their abilities and there was no one in that small forgotten station that could help them embrace this ability that they possessed and teach them how to use it properly. Accidental fires, flying ice spikes, and an occasional frozen doorknob quickly raised the whole station to its feet. The residents were filled with fear as well as prejudice. The sisters were scared too. They didn't want to hurt anyone. They tried not to. It was a true horror. There was no one to guide them, show them the right way to innervate the use and use their abilities. No one to help them. All they got were were looks of fear and prejudice and even hatred even their own grandmother proved even more there's many evens in that sentence even more useless and selfish than what the girls had originally thought fear overcame the simple minded the girls were forced to live in fear of their quote evil unquote powers hurting the community grandmother the grandmother our grandmother just a person named grandmother had a pseudo wise explanation which at least in her own distorted mind that, that my god her justified such actions the sisters were given some money some clothes some food and were told to go to core city there someone could perhaps help them nonsense the capital of decadence torn apart by rioters was luckily not the destination of the little sisters they were sick of people and uh, of the whole treacherous human race the bastards the inconsiderate walking piles of rat hound excrement threw us out forced us out like we were like we weren't even human beings if we had been eaten by rabbit animals right outside the station they wouldn't have cared one stinking bit they got rid of us we were not their problem anymore and that's all they cared about Naturally, a place, any place, untainted by humans was the best place for the little sisters to settle. Not only that, but it also had to be difficult for anyone to reach this place. The little girls tried to find a ferryman to take them to Forsaken Island, Island, an island surrounded by dangerous currents that had doomed a vast number of unfortunate boats if uh, in the past and was often avoided. As there was no one willing to take them there, they had to steal their ride. The isle, which means being a uh, what do you mean still there right doesn't that mean being a uh uh you know a, 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 what's the word for 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 somebody taking a ride uh, without paying in a boat there's a word for it but if nobody came here how did they do that anyway the island offered them a life of isolation and sufficient resources to survive they grew up and many years later they eventually mastered their quote cursed unquote gifts they sought and gained control over the abilities that were a burden up at, up to that point. In the end, they only needed each other in life. Through joint effort, they managed to survive through everything, through joint effort, through everything. And to this day, their bound is stronger than ever, and so are their powers. Um... Hmm. You might not agree with me, but you are a potential danger to those people. Psionics out of control don't seem safe to me. So throwing us out was perfectly justified according to you, says Adira, putting words in my mouth. Even though the options were very limited on my part. Anyway, how can you say such a thing? All we needed was some love, some understanding, some help. Nothing else. And we No, we needed more than that. Uh, and we got none of it. Not even a little. We never hurt anyone, says Beatrice, and never would have, not even by accident, even though she said that she did. 
because of the fire. Anyway. Um, yeah, whatever you say. I had other questions. Both of them put on a frown, but say nothing. What do you do to pass the time here? Besides fishing, says Adira, picking mushrooms and hunting hoppers. I like creating ice sculptures, says Beatrice. I enjoy creating dancy f dancing flames of various shapes and sizes. We come up with interesting tales or just meditate or practice our skills. Life here is not as boring as one might think. Trust us. Yeah, life here would be a daily struggle. Who made all of this? I mean, I suppose there there's something else. There's There's more. There's more here in this island than just them. Have you ever left this island after you came here? No. Why would we do that? We don't need anything from the outside world. We have everything we need right here. Okay, I'll be leaving now. Guy, bye. Where do you think you're going? Asks Hadira. Um, I just want to take a look around. Did you really think we were going to let you just leave this place and tell anyone about what you witnessed here? I didn't witness anything. You weren't murdering anybody. <laughs> This, this, oh no, this line is dumb. But you seemed talkative and friendly is a line. And it comes across as me being like, why are you attacking? You seemed so talkative and friendly. In all honesty, says Adira, it was interesting to hear another voice, even though, oh, another voice besides, you know, her sister. Uh, perhaps something of the outside world, not that it matters much. In the end, we can't let you get out of here alive. Hey, I'm not going down without a fight. Let's see what happens. I am immediately frozen. That's a problem. Hmm. I survived the first two turns. That is very surprising. Honestly. Um, so what can I do here? Everything is on fire, so it's a bit of a bummer. They... This the, actually, it, they don't seem to be very powerful. Wow. I actually managed to get out. I mean... A little bit. Uh... Okay, I'm not on fire. I wasn't on fire because of that. Maybe because I was frozen. So there we go. That was the tale of Adira and Beatrice, the little girls who tell a tale not of themselves, but of some other girls that definitely weren't the, the, these, for sure. Uh, even Like, our, our character just assumed they were the girls in the story, and we talked as if they were the girls in the story, but they, she, they didn't actually say they were the girls in the story. They did answer me in in a way that would, you know, imply that they were, but anyway, it's just, it's, they are dead now. And, uh, they died hating humanity, and guess what? Humanity came for them. Uh, what do we have over here? Hmm, nothing interesting. Adira's corpse, some healing items, that's good. Antidote, yeah, sure, I'll take that in a robe. Yeah, that, this, the reason, probably the reason why they, they weren't very strong is because they didn't have good equipment. Ooh, hacking a hundred, I like hacking a hundred. Oh, also they had hacking equipment, didn't they? What did I just get out of that? Didn't I get a hacking thing? I don't know. A either way, what do we have? Magnifying neuroscopic filter, pyrokinetic stream. That's for this. I, I like that. I like that a lot. I don't like, however, that it's the end of the episode. Uh, because, you know, we're out of time. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been... Under Rail Expedition. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead, leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.